Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. We interrupt the usual Let's Play Astroneer video this week with a highlight from two recent live streams. I know, I know, you really want to see what happened after those hispines took me out near the core of Deslo. Don't worry, we will pick that up next Wednesday. But this week, I wanted to share some highlights of a recent project I did during two live streams a couple of weeks ago, so we're going to switch to footage from those streams. And if you didn't already know, I stream Astroneer on Twitch every Friday night at 7pm central at twitch.tv forward slash gaming. I also stream a variety of other games every Thursday and Saturday as well. And if you really want to see the archives of the two live streams from this video, you can find those in the Twitch Archives playlist right here on YouTube. But you know what? Enough shameful self-promotion. To give you a bit of background on this project, I was hanging out in the Astroneer Discord chat a few weeks ago and we were speculating as to what power producers might be included in the upcoming update. It dawned on me that the currently leaked extra large wind turbine produces enough units per second to fully power a gateway chamber on several planets. Somehow, my imagination jumped from that realization to wondering if it would be possible to power all six gateway chambers on a planet simultaneously. Now look, I am not talking about having five friends scattered about the planet and activating gateways at the same time. No, I wanted to know if I could do it on my own from a central location. And so this project was born. I had no idea if the game would even recognize that gateway chambers on the other side of the planet were being powered, or if even attempting to power all six at once might crash the game. Before I could get started, I needed a general idea how to tackle this. Since I have a current save full of readily available resources thanks to auto extractors, I decided that the best approach would be to utilize a bunch of RTGs, several hundred extenders, and a handful of splitters. So I printed the splitters and RTGs, along with the platforms and silos to support them, and an oxygenator, and then I headed to Kalidor. Now, I already have a hydrazine factory on Kalidor that is powered by solar panels and batteries, but I was not planning on using any of that power at all. I made my way to the nearest gateway at the South Pole to drop off the items for the power station, then made my way to the equator. From there, I wanted to drill and pave a road between two gateways along the equator. The way I saw it, creating a nice smooth road would make the process of laying down hundreds of extenders much easier. I wouldn't have to deal with going over or around mountains, dodging cave openings, or generally dealing with any other geographic features. Once I had this first bit of road down, I drove between the two gateways to determine how long it took me to get from one to the other, then drove halfway back for a rough approximation for a midpoint. This midpoint would serve as a crossroads where I could split the power to run from the South Pole up to the crossroads, then out to the two gateways to the east and the two to the west, as well as up to the gateway at the North Pole. Once I found that crossroads, I laid down a road to the North Pole, then doubled back and created a nice road to the South Pole. And then the real labor kicked in. I got the power station set up and in place, then I created as many extenders as I could carry on my backpack and got to work laying them down while heading north. Honestly, it went a lot faster than I expected. Granted, I was using the quick tip I shared with you last March in Astroneer Academy 103. Speaking of Astroneer Academy, be on the lookout for graduate level courses beginning in late April or early May covering the new missions, a more in-depth exploration of automation, and how to best utilize all of the new power items. If you're subscribed and notifications turned on, then you will not miss the return of Astroneer Academy. But back to our project. The reason I picked Kalidor for this project was simple. I already had an auto extractor for Malachite and a smelter on Kalidor. Granted, I had to put the smelter on the rover to use it, but it got the job done. I went through quite a bit of copper throughout this project. In fact, I emptied the storage canister six or seven times in total. But to be honest, refilling the copper supply now and then was a welcome break from the monotony of laying down extenders. It also helped that chat was really active both nights, so there is a big shout out to everyone who turned out to watch me take on this weird project. I did run into a couple of issues now and then. The first was my own fault because I wasn't really paying attention to where I was going. The rover got stuck for a bit, meaning that I had to dig it out. And when I was able to drive the rover, it fell all the way down to the first cave layer. 
but even that mishap brought about something good. I found yet another zebra marble. Plus, I was really close to the ramp leading back up to my base, so I was back on the surface in no time at all. We'll slow down the footage again soon to look at a second problem that I ran into. I ended up the first stream with 4 out of 6 gateway chambers connected, and I did a bit of road extension to the final two. I picked the project up again the next evening and began the task of laying extenders from the crossroads to the two gateways to the west. Now, you may have noticed the splitters sitting off to one side and that there are medium platforms connecting all of the power cables at the crossroads. I did that based on a suggestion in chat. I thought it was a good idea for a couple of reasons. First, the splitter only has three outputs where the medium platform has four. Using the platform instead of the splitter meant that I could easily connect all four directions of cables on one platform instead of needing two splitters. It also seemed like a good idea because unless I wanted to spend the time adjusting the flow of power through each splitter, those splitters were going to wind up just cutting power in half at each junction. And I'll come back to that idea in just a few minutes. Things went pretty quick since I only had two more gateway chambers to the west to connect. It was just more of the same. Lay extenders, run out of copper, go to the caves to smell malachite, and repeat. Shortly after a visit to the caves for some malachite, I made a pit stop to package some RTGs because I thought I had deployed too many. After that, I decided to plop down a splitter at the south pole just to check how much power was flowing through the medium platform located there. I had a total of 72 units of power, just as I thought, and I wasn't too concerned that the same splitter showed a full half of the power when connected on the end that would power the gateway. And this is where I made an incorrect assumption. We'll come back to that in just a bit. With the power switch in place between my power station and the platform with the extenders, I began a quick trip to go plug in the extenders to a platform on each gateway that I had already ran extenders to. Since the power switch was off, no power was flowing through the line but I still had oxygen. With all of those gateways now plugged in, I could finish up connecting the final two. I quickly ran into the second mishap of the project though. While laying down extenders, I became stuck on absolutely nothing. I could run and walk in place and turn around, but I could not move from the spot I was stuck on. No amount of digging or building soil underneath was able to free me. After struggling with this for a few minutes, I moved to the nearest extender, took my oxygen tanks off my backpack, and waited to suffocate. Once back at the shuttle, I jumped on my tractor to drive back out to the rover, filled the holes I had made in the road, and resumed getting the final gateways connected. With everything now connected, I went back to the gateway chamber at the south pole, ready to throw the power switch and power all six gateway chambers on Kalidor at the exact same moment. Here is how it went down during the stream. In five, four, three, two, and one. Game hasn't crashed. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. <laughs> and what we're going to do to check is grab the odd stone and see if they are all bright nodes or not. I'm anxious. I really am anxious. Okay, game didn't crash. Do we have six bright nodes? No, we have two bright nodes. Huh. We got North Pole and South Pole, but we did not get any to the west or any to the east. Yeah, it didn't work. So chat and I began troubleshooting because I really thought it was going to work. We found that the North Pole was activated, complete with an active odd stone, yet all of the gateway platforms were still present. I couldn't plug in a power cable to the platforms, so I guess I sort of broke the game a little bit. But that is why we made a backup before throwing the power switch. To troubleshoot, I wanted to verify that none of the equator gateways had come unplugged. When I arrived at the first one and got out of the rover, the root of the problem became clear. The power meters in the gateway were showing it was only half powered, meaning it was only receiving six units per second of power rather than the 12 required. And this is where I began to realize I had made an incorrect assumption earlier. I had assumed that 
since power flows to where it is needed when routed through regular platforms, that the 72 total units of power I was producing would be evenly split among all six gateways. In reality, since the extenders were traveling out from those platforms in different directions, they were acting as rudimentary splitters. The platform at the power station was splitting the power in half, meaning 36 units were going to the south pole while the remainder was going out to the crossroads. When it arrived there, it was split into three with 12 units per second flowing in each direction. While that was sufficient to power the gateway chamber at the North Pole, it would not be enough when the power was split in half again when it arrived at the first East and West gateways. So I loaded up the backup save that I made before the first attempt, did some quick math in my head to figure out how many more RTGs I was going to need, and set to work getting it all deployed. Thankfully, I had half a dozen extra RTGs packaged and ready for use, so it was easy to get them into play. After some discussion with chat, we determined that 24 extra units per second would make up for the power deficit that we experienced in the first attempt. With the extra RTGs in place, I once again duplicated the save file, or just in case, and I tried again. Here's how the second attempt went down. In 5, 4, 3, 2... <laughs> I can get YouTube. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. I think this will work. So we've got the extra power. Uh, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling good about this one. Moment of truth. Same thing. Same result. Yeah, same exact result as the first time. The gateway chambers at the poles were powered, but all four along the equator remained dim nodes. So, more troubleshooting was required because I was convinced that this would work and surely I had just made an error somewhere. So I jumped back into the rover to head to the equator to investigate. I found the gateway sitting at around 75% power this time, so I had simply miscalculated again. As Warfrat asked in chat, why did we trust my math? The problem is, I was just running the numbers in my head. So this time, determined to get it right, I actually put pen to paper to give myself a visual guide of how much power was required at each split along the run of extenders to ensure we were going to be able to power all six gateways at once. The final number that chat and I agreed upon was a whopping 144 units per second of power or double what I had started with in the first attempt. Technically, I could have simply moved the power station to the crossroads and had enough power without adding any extra RTGs, but that would require packaging everything up, moving it all, and redeploying it. To be honest, that probably would have been simpler than going to the trouble of making more RTGs, but at the time, it seemed like more work than the latter option. So this was going to require another dozen RTGs on top of the 24 we were already using. Thankfully, as I mentioned earlier, this save is already rich in resources thanks to a previous project where I placed auto extractors on all raw resources. But those resources were scattered about a few planets waiting to be collected and all the gases required to make the composite resources for RTGs were located at my base back on Desolo. So I loaded up the most recent backup save, headed back to base on Kalidor, jumped at the shuttle and blasted off for Desolo, where I quickly realized I didn't have enough steel or titanium alloy for the project. I had enough stuff to make the titanium alloy already, but I had to travel to Glacio in order to pick up more hematite. Once back on Desolo, I got to work making steel and titanium alloy to ultimately put into nanocarbon alloy for the dozen RTGs that I needed. Granted, I had to first smelt a bunch of titanite and hematite, but it wasn't a huge deal. And hey, it filled up some time in the stream before making the third attempt at powering all six games. 
gateways on Galador. While I was waiting on the hematite to smell into iron, I realized I didn't have enough lithium to make a dozen RTGs. But that definitely is not a problem because the lithium mine I have set up on Dasanya has lithium practically everywhere. Seriously, I could probably easily get over a thousand lithium out of the surrounding area. So I jumped back into the shuttle and headed to Vasanya to pick up more lithium. As luck would have it, everything had finished smelting when we returned to Desolo, so now I just needed to make some steel to go in the nanocarbon alloy, then take that to the small printers with the lithium I had just picked up and mass produce a bunch more RTGs. Back on Kalidor, I deployed a third large silo and a dozen of the RTGs that I had printed, made another backup save, and with confidence that I finally had everything properly sorted, got ready to turn on the power switch. Here's how it went down. In five, four, three, two, one. Moment of truth. Of course, this takes 30 seconds. I'm nervous. I want this to work. I will keep throwing RTGs at this until it works. Not even joking. All right. There is our odd stone. Fingers crossed. Yes, you can say hi to YouTube this time. Yeah, we did it! They are all six power. Look at that. Every single one of them are powered. So, what did we learn through all of this? First, Astroneer is robust enough to know that all six gateways are connected to power and will activate each one provided you have the required power. Second, we learned to never trust the math that I do in my head. And third, we learned that while this project was a fun experiment, it is really overkill and winds up requiring way more power than you need if you just activated each gateway individually. But you know what? Even with that third lesson learned, I plan on trying this again soon in a slightly different way. Once the currently codenamed Missions and Big Power update is released, I'm going to pick a new power source and set them up at each gateway across Glacio. I am then going to wire it all together using power switches and button repeaters to see how well those little button repeaters handle input from half a point of the way. But that's still down the road a bit. You can bet that I'll be streaming all of my progress and if this video does well, I'll post another highlight video of all my work. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And maybe consider getting subscribed with notifications turned on so that you don't miss any of my weekly Astroneer content, including my current Let's Play series and the upcoming additions to Astroneer Academy, along with videos from a variety of other games I feature on my channel. And while you're at it, why not head over to twitch.tv forward slash Vainglorious Gaming and hit that follow button so that you don't miss any of my live streams. That wraps up today's video, so until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay Vainglorious.